I'm Tom Hardy and you're watching the Venom vlog. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to an episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. This is episode 299, and finally, I'm so sorry I'm late with this, because we're over like four weeks late almost. Uh, this is your reviews. Uh, according to you guys, I told you guys just in my review of this movie, I wanted everyone to put their reviews of Venom in the comment section. Like, the you know, the, keep it as tight as possible, keep it as short as possible. And uh, I know I have a lot of things I have to go through in this episode, so we're going to dive right in. We're not even going to waste any time. Uh, but I do want to say quickly, episode 300 will come up. Um, my surgery got delayed a little bit, uh, so I have a little bit of extra time. I'm just now filming this on uh, Saturday, November 3rd, uh, 2018. I'm just now filming this, and I was supposed to film it a few days ago, and I just woke up, and I'm like, I got to get this in before I go to work. Otherwise, I'm not going to have really any time else to record a one-hour video over the next few days. Uh, so let's get right in. Um, you know, you guys were really awesome, very supportive of this show. You have been, and we're going to talk about that in episode 300. Uh, but in this episode, I just want to go right to my you know review, which was episode 291. And uh, I'm just going to go through and read as many comments as I can. If I don't read your full review, I'm sorry. I just want to try to squeeze in as many people as possible in this to include you guys. And then I'll try to, you know, respond. Some of these I may just read and, you know, agree or disagree but I'll, I'll try to move as quickly as I can and uh, hopefully this won't end up being a full hour uh, but you never know sometimes these get out of my control and I try to include as many of you guys as I can uh, but the first one's pretty easy it's our friend Georgie and he says spoilers Venom likes chocolate <laughs> and this does have spoilers so if you're in countries like uh, China where the movie has not released yet this will contain spoilers so maybe you want to turn away and come back after you see the movie on November 9th uh, so yes, and then I think Japan is seeing the movie this weekend, so we'll see those numbers pretty soon, and maybe we'll talk about it episode 300 if we get the final numbers in. Um, so Georgie, yes, thank you for your comment. Venom does love chocolate, uh, and uh, Section Gaming Plus added also tater tots, <laughs> which is true. Um, Shirley Locke uh, says, I really, really enjoyed Venom. Definitely a 7 out of 10. Please, 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 I hope we get a Venom 2. I hope we do as well with it making over $500 million already. Uh, I think so, and over this weekend, it may... Get very close to the 200 million dollar marker here in the U.S., which would be fantastic if it could do that. It's at 192 right now, uh, but after this weekend, it could be up to like 196, and then hopefully before it leaves the theater, it gets that extra four million dollars. Hopefully, so I'm glad people are still seeing it. Uh, that's really great. Um, uh, Migustov says, I don't think it's a bad thing Spider-Man wasn't in this film. It would have made it messier. It's cool that Venom got the spotlight. To be honest, this gives more opportunities for the second movie. And I totally agree with that. Uh, absolutely. Um, and uh, Slipknot fan says 7 out of 10 also. I saw a lot of 7 out of 10s, not just here on the comments, but also like on Twitter and stuff like that. And that was my review of it. I kind of gave it a 7 out of 10. And uh, it was neat to see a lot of people, you know, not committing to like, you know, I saw a lot of you guys who were just like, this is the best movie ever, best comic movie ever. Uh, if you feel that way, that's awesome. I'm not here to take anything away from people. Uh, but it was cool to see a lot of people that were like, hey, it was above average. And I think that was good for a lot of us. You know, that's what we needed uh, it to be at the very least was above average. And now hopefully the sequel can fix all the problems the first movie had and do better with the sequel, hopefully. Um, Let's see, uh, Bob W. Uh, commented saying about how he likes the idea of building the a monster alternative to the MCU. So having like, uh, you know, Venom as like, you know, Jekyll and Hyde in a way or, or Frankenstein in a way. And then have like Man Wolf or Werewolf by Night or something and bring in all these like, you know, supernatural characters and make their version of the monsters. I think that would be cool, but I don't know if Sony would would really do that <laughs> you know i i I, uh, I like sony and you know some of the people over there uh, to an extent but i feel like a lot of times in their movies their execution is uh they, they i don't know they they play it safe to a degree that i i think wouldn't lend itself to that kind of universe but then again they're making morbius so i could be wrong maybe they are actually taking a chance on stuff and uh, we'll have to see you know see how it goes with morbius when it starts uh, filming uh, early next year so uh, we'll keep an eye on that and uh, yeah that would be great i i think that would be a great idea uh, but rarely do, you know, f fan ideas, you know, end up being made. So, so I'm not holding my breath for it, but that would be awesome, Bob. I would agree. Um, Zenozilla says, my sister and I just saw the movie tonight on Sunday, October 7th. Uh, we had a lot of fun watching the movie. 
I could ramble easily for an hour over everything we liked, though it's certainly not perfect. A few things did feel rushed within the plot, but we did give it an 8 out of 10, and we might go see it again in the theater. That is awesome. Yeah, I hope you did. I think Zeno did see it a second time as well, and I know a lot of you guys saw it uh, two, three times. Um, I did go back and see it a fourth time, so uh, so that I was like, all right, good. I got my fourth in. I had a day off one day, and I was kind of stressing about stuff, and I just kind of secretly went by myself to a matinee at the theater down the street from my new apartment and just kind of was like, I'm not going to, you know, post about this. This is going to be me time. And, uh, you know, and just, I'm just going to enjoy this movie one last time. And uh, it was pretty fun. It was great seeing it for a fourth time. I just needed a break because I saw it three days in a row and I was like, all right, I need like a couple weeks before I go see it again. So I did see it about a week and a half ago and, uh, and it was, it was great to see again. So, uh, I'm now I got to, you know, on, on my next paycheck, I think I'm going to pre-order the PlayStation version, the digital version, and I'll probably buy the box set when it comes out too. But the PlayStation, if you, uh, get the digital version, you'll get a theme for your PlayStation. And I don't know how cool it is. If one of you guys got it, let me know how cool it is. Is it worth the purchase? Uh, Cause otherwise I'll just wait for the box set and I'll probably buy one or two different versions of the movie. And, uh, and then, you know, I think some of those movies come with digital codes and I'll give those digital codes out as well. So if you guys are out there and you don't have the money to buy the movie when it comes out to, you know, when it comes out for sale, um, I will probably have one or two digital codes to give away most likely. Um, Legendary Moji says, uh, before I watch and get an influence, I just want to say I walked out of the movie yesterday pleasantly surprised to be smiling. Yeah, sure, I had issues with the slowness of the first act, uh, along with its off dialogue and pacing issues, but I began to get very worried that I was watching a sci-fi channel quality movie. Then miraculously, the movie does a 180 and Eddie gets the suit and it takes off running, never looking back. Um, that's really awesome. I saw a lot of people did have issues with the first act. I personally didn't. I found uh, some of that stuff, uh, you know, great for setup and, and some of those things paid off, not all of them. Uh, but I did ultimately like the first act, but I will agree it could have been a little bit quicker in some areas or a little bit more interesting in some areas. Uh, it would have been great if they opened up with like they originally planned where it was like John Jameson and his crew on the meteor pulling the symbiotes out. I think that would have been a fantastic way to open the movie and maybe, you know, make it feel like a little like aliens or like, you know, horror sci-fi related. Um, and then they get on the ship and then, you know, as they're flying towards earth, they're like, we got the cargo, we're coming back. And then you see like one of the, the casings, like a uh, riots casing crack or like fall off the shelf, you know, or I guess it wouldn't fall cause it's in space. So it would float. Uh, but that would be interesting to see, you know, a riot break out of the, the, you know, chamber it was held in and, uh, and then, you know, you know, attack the, uh, the astronauts and cause them to crash. I think that would have been a great way to open the movie. And I think that would have fixed a lot of people's issues with the slowness of the first act. Cause it would have hit it right off the bat. Um, even though it opened with a crash still would have been nice to see the setup to the crash. Um, Bob also comes in and says he likes the way, that, cause I mentioned that I didn't really like how the other symbiotes were utilized, that they were just there to die and show like weaknesses and stuff which is fine. It's, it's good for information, but, uh, but you know, a lot of us have, you know, have interest in those characters and we were kind of hoping the masses would see those characters like scream and, you know, somebody in Lasher. And I guess, I guess there was no Lasher. I didn't see a green one. Um, but it would have been nice to just see a little bit more, but I, I, I did see some people disagree with me on that one, which is totally cool. Uh, you know, some people just like the way they were used and, uh, and that that's totally fine with me. Um, because, uh, cause they did, they did use, utilize, utilize them well as far as setup and payoffs and stuff go. But, you know, some of us would have liked to seen a, at least one scene with scream or something running around. Uh, but I guess that's more fan service and not so much story service. So I can kind of get the argument there. Um, two hammer says I wasn't exactly disappointed by this movie, but I'd be lying if I said I was expecting, I, I wasn't expecting more out of it. Um, so yeah, I did see a lot of people that said, um, you know, the movie wasn't a seven out of 10 for them. They were just like, ah, I was kind of going in with me mediocre feelings. And then at the end of the day, I still didn't meet the mediocre, you know, expectations. And, uh, so I, I can totally see that, uh, to, uh, to, to T hammer. <laughs> um, thank you very much for the comment. The start of the movie dragged on just a little bit for him. So he agrees with that assessment of, uh, of the movie opening a little too slow. Um, we do have Bruce McDonald here, very awesome person, uh, writes me sometimes on Instagram, so give him a little shout out too. Uh, he says, I definitely can't wait for Venom to come out on Blu-ray because I will be getting a copy for sure. Uh, I rate the movie a 9 out of 10. So there you go, that's probably our highest rating so far, although I think we do get a couple people say 9 and 10 out of 10s too. Um, but yeah, Bruce really enjoyed the movie. He wrote me about it on Instagram a couple times, and uh, it's great. I loved seeing a lot of you guys really dig this movie that much. Uh, that's 
obviously great for the movie. It's great for word of, that, uh, word of mouth of the movie. And look how well it's done. And it's done that because people, a lot of people were just pleasantly surprised and, and ended up liking it. And I love that. I love seeing that reaction because this movie was getting so much hate from the people we all pay attention to, uh, but uh, but people that the masses do have no idea exist. And so people can go out there and trash movies all they want. And sometimes those words, uh, those negative words get to the masses. Uh, but in this instance, it didn't. It didn't even affect them. They still went and saw it themselves. And that was awesome. So that just shows you the power of Tom Hardy and also the power of the character and the intrigue that the character had uh, with the trailers. Enough people were intrigued enough to pay their money to go see it, which is great. The Great Ones basically just commented a bunch of spoilers, so I won't go through all of that because it's not really a review, but they did point out the stuff they liked in it, which was uh, they really liked, uh, you know, the, the Carnage stuff, like at the at the very end, uh, there will be Carnage. They really liked that scene. Um, the ending they thought was really great with the final battle. I see that in their comments here. And then they also really liked the Into the Spider-Verse, uh, you know, uh, scene, which was cool. And we'll probably talk a little bit about that. I'm going to do some Into the Spider-Verse episodes. I don't know if I'll get to them before work today, depending on how long this gets, uh, but, uh, but I'll try to get to them soon and try to post them up as soon as possible because there is some cool news and some artwork street artwork that came out uh, to promote the movie in the UK which is really awesome and it came out really well so I kind of want to make a video on it um, Green Lizard Ball says I was it was definitely a fun movie it wasn't very much horror-esque which I expected way back when it was first announced uh, the movie instead played like a live-action cartoon uh, and that is true um, you know I, I saw a lot of people say that that uh, you know we were kind of we were kind of told that it was going to be like a body horror thing and, and there were elements of that for sure but the tone of it you know was was a little bit more um you know had more humor to it uh, it had more you know uh intensity in in different ways you know and it was i don't know I, I agree with you i think we were painted in this picture to think we were going to see something like the fly or american werewolf in london um and we didn't really get that i feel and i and i see a lot of people felt that too so i totally agree with that criticism uh, that was definitely something i kind of took a point away from with the movie i'm like look i i get when you're in you know trying to promote your movie you have to like look for things that people can wrap their head around to compare it to uh but the this movie didn't feel to me at least a ton like those movies um and i guess those movies were had a more serious tone in, in certain areas in a lot of areas and a more horror-esque vibe to them and a more sci-fi vibe to them and this one kind of played more lean more to the superhero level of, of storytelling and, and and shied away at times from the sci-fi where i wanted it to sink its teeth more into the sci-fi it kind of pulled away so I, I totally agree with that green lizard balls i know some of you guys may not agree with that which is which is fine uh but that was kind of i kind of agreed with that assessment as well um Proof fan says, uh, Seek, I'll be seeing this on Tuesday. I'm also going to Pizza Hut as well. <laughs> Can't wait. Um, and, uh, oh, okay, here he goes. He commented back. He said, saw it yesterday and loved it. I forgot to heart these. I'm so sorry. I forgot to heart your comments. It's probably just because I, I I totally missed out on them. So I, I apologize. Um, so, yeah, uh, Proof fan says, saw it yesterday and I loved it. I wonder if they are saving the symbiote planet uh for the sequel i also didn't have a problem with the chase scene which was shot well and pretty entertaining mostly i do think riot wasn't really fleshed out though um so yeah overall liked it uh you know uh, had a couple critiques as well but uh like the cart i know a lot of you guys really did like that uh, chase sequence and even debated me a little bit about it because i kept explaining my point of view of how i would have as as neat as that scene was i'm not taking away from the stunt people and everyone that worked on that scene uh, but i felt like that time and that money could have been utilized in another fashion uh maybe even giving us that intro that you know we could have seen and done something a little bit different with that uh, chase sequence you know that was just my takeaway from it uh, but a lot of you guys really enjoyed that chase sequence enough to where you overlooked um that it doesn't really add too too much to the you know the story or it doesn't add too much to stuff we haven't already seen that you know the character do so uh so that's totally fine so uh yeah i, I saw a lot of uh, pushback on that with with uh with my comments but that's okay that's what we're here to do is discuss things and not just all agree and be a hive mind on stuff so that's that's great so i agree with you proof fan i thank you for the comment i, I appreciate it um Ben, uh, ben Michek says, uh, just got back from seeing it and loved it. Nice and sweet. We've got a lot of uh, short ones here. Uh, Christian Cottle says, I'm so glad it's doing so well and I love this film. Even I even like the first act, which, yeah, I, 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 I kind of did too. I didn't have a problem with it as much as a lot of people did. So that's cool that you did. Uh, Freezy Beach says, Venom is just awesome movie. 10 out of 10 for me. So there we go. We got it for our first 10 out of 10. Um, Techno Spider says, I really enjoyed this movie. This is my third favorite Marvel movie. Holy cow, what are your first two? Let, let me know in the comments of this video, Techno Spider. Um, I'd love to hear that. 
Anthro Ranger X, uh, it, this guy's uh, uh, account on Instagram is really cool. He posts a lot of pictures of him in costumes, like he's making you know Power Ranger costumes and Venom costumes, and uh, you know collects a lot of toys and stuff like action figures. Um, he's got a really cool uh, Instagram account. Uh, Anthro Ranger X says my favorite line was "Sorry about Venom." Yeah, that was actually a good line that Anne says to him at the end. She's like, "Yeah, sorry about Venom." I got uh, yeah, I kind of like that because she kind of has a connection with the character too, with Venom the symbiote, and she understands maybe why it likes Eddie, and uh, and so she she understands the loss like from that point of view, which I thought was great. I thought that was a great line too. Uh, Nova Dragon says, do you think they were teasing the whole Eddie getting cancer storyline when Eddie found out what was happening to the organs? Um, I know this isn't a review, it's a question, but no, I don't really think that at all. Um, you know, I, I think it's just the symbiote was feeding off them like it does, and maybe that will lead to cancer, possibly. I mean, you're right, it could be a good setup for it. I would buy into that if that was the setup. So it's a good observation, but I don't know if that was its initial intent, but it might be something they make the intent later when they do sequels. And there was a lot of cool deleted stuff I've seen. I saw a scene where Riz Ahmed was talking to the little girl that was Riot, and then she, like, infects him. In the movie, they just cut to black uh, when she, like, reaches out for him. But in the deleted behind-the-scenes stuff, he actually gets raised up in the air, and the little girl holds her arm up. And so there was clearly a lot more going on in that scene that didn't make it to the final cut. So I am really looking forward to the DVD, and I've been hearing rumors, and Blu-rays, the Blu-ray as well, too, but I've been hearing uh, rumors that it might be 20 minutes longer, the cut of the movie might be 20 minutes longer. And I don't know how true those are, those are just rumors, but I'm certainly excited to see more stuff. And we will dissect all the special features and all the deleted scenes when that Blu-ray comes out for sure. Uh, D. Baca says, I personally liked it as much as Infinity War, and I loved Infinity War. I'm giving both movies a 9 out of 10, or I'm giving uh, this movie a 9 out of 10. So there you go, another 9 out of 10 from D. Baca, which is great. Uh, Hugh Mungus, <laughs> I love that name, says, I am actually really glad they didn't name drop Clintar. It adds a lot of mystery, similar to how it was in the original comics. And that's true, too. I mean, uh, that is very true. It took them a while to, to mention the Clintar name in the comics, and I think that was one of my critiques was, that they didn't mention Clintar, and uh, I would have, you know, I think I was like, oh, I would have liked to see more of that. But again, that's more of a fan note and, and not so much a story note, and so I kind of agree with Humongous. It probably didn't make sense to wedge it in just for story purposes, so they they left it out and room to go in the sequel, which is totally fine. So I'm, I'm with you on that one, too. Uh, Draco Safaria says, I don't know the motorcycle scene. On one hand, I absolutely loved it, but you were dead on right with the fact that it wasn't really needed. Um, and Colton came in and said Ducati gave it to them and uh, for free and Tom rides motorcycles in real life I bet he wanted it in and I have a no doubt in my mind that that was purely because Ducati maybe was one of the uh, you know the people who invested in this movie or they at least invested a mo some motorcycles to the movie and uh, wanted to get their name out there and they were part of the promotion you saw we talked about them in the, some of the stuff the videos leading up to the movie coming out was that Ducati was you know campaigning that they were part of this movie. So I have no doubt in my mind that it was something like that. And sometimes when they're looking at their budget and they're like, we don't have enough money for this scene, a company like Ducati would be like, hey, if you give, we'll give you the motorcycles to make that scene cheaper and we'll provide like this for you and maybe like a, a, a team of something and like some kind of expert and we'll do it all on our dime as an investor. And then, you know, and then you get to use our stuff and we get our name out there. Sometimes that happens and then there's money exchange too, but uh, not as much and it, it cuts costs down on stuff. So sometimes that happens. Like when you're filming a convenience store scene and you want like Pepsi in the background, that helps, you know, in a way film that scene. Uh, and that's why product placement exists. So I have, I know the reasons why why the scene is in the movie, uh, but I don't know if I fully agree with it. But when it comes down to making a movie, you have to look at your cost. And if it, it was like, hey, we don't have the cost because no one's going to endorse the opening sequence with John Jameson landing on the meteor because we can't put any product placement stuff there, uh, so we can't afford that scene. But Ducati's going to give us a motorcycle, so we got to do this scene because it'll make it, you know, inexpensive for us. I totally get why they did it, um, but you know, creatively, I kind of wish, you know, it wasn't there. But I don't. At the end of the day, I don't mind it being there either. This one actually is kind of a, a, against, a, you know, like the movie being that great, which is good. I wanted people to not just comment and say they loved it. Uh, it was great to see a couple people that were like, yeah, it wasn't as good as I expected. And we got this comment here from Yeah So who said, I just thought the movie was cut together horribly. It feels like there are parts missing throughout because some character moments just don't feel earned. I'd like to see a director's cut since there was a whole 40 minutes of stuff cut out. Uh, that's a lot. Well, uh, you know, I'll be honest with you. Um, there's most movies have a lot of stuff like 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 30 to 40 minutes cut out most movies do i think when you uh, they always say like when you're filming a movie you know you feel, film what you can get you know definitely focus on that but sometimes especially with a guy like tom hardy who was on this movie as a producer he kind of you know improv some scenes and he kind of like you know fully committed to stuff with venom 
And uh, and then the like I said, there was the stuff with Riz Ahmed getting lifted up by the young girl. So there was definitely things that I think would be interesting to see added back in the movie. And then there are stuff that I don't find that interesting. Like when Tom Hardy was like dancing in the street. I remember if you go back to like episode 12 or whatever of my show, or it was like really early on, like the first 20 episodes, uh, they, they showed that footage in Atlanta where he gets out of the car and he starts, you know, moving around and twitching. And I understand it's the Venom suit in him trying to get him to not go into the, you know, into the hospital to get another MRI or whatever. And it's trying to, you know, it's like him fighting. He's grabbing the car door and opening and shutting and opening and shutting it over and over. And it's all very neat stuff to to watch in person and happen because it shows Tom Hardy committing to the role but it would it would probably be hard to put that into the movie with that with and, and get the intended um, reaction from people that you want uh, you know the, the body horror elements and stuff and it, maybe it would come across too comical to some people or people would just interpret it that way because it makes them uncomfortable and so I, so I would say probably most of that 40 minutes is probably not good 40 minutes. Uh, you know, that's probably cut for a reason. But I'm sure at least 20 of those 40 minutes are probably vital to the story. And I agree. I feel like there were parts in this movie that had bad editing. I think there was a moment in the car, the uh, motorcycle chase scene, where the music starts off and it's like, dun, 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 and he gets on the motorcycle and drives off. And then once he goes over the ramp and comes back down, the music starts up again. Da, da, da. It's like, so I feel like they made like a 30 second song and then they played the whole thing and they're like, oh, we got to replay it. And again, that's part of the editing. It's part of the sound design and everything. And so there were definitely moments in this movie, editing wise, in, especially that I felt uh, were not as up to par as they should have been. So I actually agree with this comment uh, very much. But I also, on the other hand, would say most of that 40 minutes is probably not interesting stuff. Most comic book movies and big movies do cut a ton of stuff for time, budget, uh, or they think it's not super essential, or maybe it is essential, but then, you know, they have to compromise. The studio doesn't want it, or the test audience didn't like it, but the director and the writers do, but they get outvoted, you know, so there's there's so many things like that to happen. You know, movies are obviously are not made by one person, um, and even if they were, that pr probably wouldn't be good for movies, <laughs> you know, uh, so it's, it's good to have a collaboration, a team effort, uh, but I will agree to that. I, I w I'm really interested to see if they put 20 minutes of the movie back into the movie, and the other 20 minutes as the deleted scenes, it would be really neat to see that. I would like to see a scissor reel of all the stuff Tom Hardy improvised on the, the Blu-ray as a special feature, where it's just like 10 minutes of him just being weird and wacky and committing to the character. I would really love a, a feature like that. That would be great. Um, Shirley Locke said, uh, so happy for Venom doing well. Yes, and I know Shirley had a comment earlier, but yes, it's nice seeing that it did so well. Um, Case and Wright said, hey man, quick thoughts. I just finished my second viewing and wanted to point out that the car chase scene established the existence of Life Foundation drones that track Venom. And he goes on to say about that, and, and that's 100% valid. I know it's to set up the drones, but again, for me, I was like, well, you don't need the motorcycle to do that. You could have just had Venom running on foot and two drones coming after him and, you know, that whole sequence. And you could have cut it down shorter, had him become Venom faster um, without all the, you know, the, the him falling off the motorcycle and the you know the tentacles coming out like you could have cut all that because we've seen him do those powers now we wanted to see him become venom so that that's just that's you know my way of how i would have edited that scene but uh but at the same time it's it's all valid like what you're saying is valid they, they it did establish something and then later on one of the drones followed him you know to the hospital and that's how you know trees and all those guys you know ended up at the hospital when he was there the second time when he got separated from the suit but overall Kaysen said he did enjoy the movie especially after the second time he saw i picked up on a few more things so that's great i'm i'm, I'm glad overall that you really enjoyed it and uh, yeah i agree with you on the drones it, it def that scene set those up too so and that had a nice payoff later on so it all works out um Mark Marsden said, I love the movie. I was not a big fan of the post credit scene with Carnage. For me, just seeing his hair and expression while talking was just corny uh, to take serious, and it was too corny to take seriously at all. And even so, uh, if they plan on making him dark and continuing to play that tone, I don't see a very convincing villain there. Uh, but who knows? I'll still watch it uh, when it comes out. So yeah, I mean, the, the wig, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people commented on the wig, and I, I agree on, on, a, on a certain level. I think so many of us are just so used to to seeing Woody Harrelson bald with a shaved head, um, that the uh, you know that the wig thing is uh, you know you know I get it like we clearly knew it was a wig even though I thought really when you look at it the wig looked okay uh, it didn't look great but it looked okay but it doesn't matter because all of us know what Woody Harrelson looks like so what even if they got an outstanding wig I think a lot of us would have had a visceral reaction to it uh, what they should have done which I thought would have been neat uh, is make him bald. Like uh, the, if, if Eddie Brock walks into the cell and maybe uh, Cletus is like 
pulling his hair out. So you see like bald patches and you see red like all over the floor. And then as he's pulling it out, there's like blood on his fingernails from scratching his hair out. And that's what he's using to spell, you know, welcome Eddie on the thing with. Uh, that would have really intensified that scene. Maybe too much. Maybe that would have put it into an R rating for that bonus scene. Uh, but uh, that to me would have been great. And then that way you could establish, okay, he did have red hair, but now he's yanking it out <laughs> uh, for whatever reason. He's getting stir crazy in his cell and it's finally eating up at him. And now he's going to talk to Eddie like the first reporter he's talked to in a long time and uh, maybe this is his way of reacting to it is that you know um, it's 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 getting under his skin in a way uh, so yeah I would have liked to seen something like that personally uh, but uh, that way you could have established all right he had red hair but then he only has patches of it so it, it would make sense to look bad because he's yanking it out uh, that would have been really intense um, but yes, Mark, thank you for your comment. I appreciate it. Uh, June the Fox says, at the time of this comment being typed, I will be seeing the movie tonight. As much, as such, I am avoiding spoilers. Okay, so that was it. Sorry, June. I thought uh, I, I, some of these I didn't read ahead of time or reread. I read them all when you guys left them, but I did. I haven't reread them in a month. So, uh, so if I if I read something that isn't a review, you know, I'm, at least I'm just trying to get in as many comments as I can. Um, Apex Specter says the only reason why the movie got a bad rating is because of the Lady Gaga movie. Um, I, I don't know if I agree with that, um, but I'm, I'm glad you liked one the episode, and I'm glad you still like the movie. Um, but I don't know the, the Lady Gaga. It's two different audiences, and I know there was like you know bots and people out there trying to like you know escalate some kind of situation. But really, I, like I kept saying, I was like, just ignore it. It'll go away. Just ignore it. Uh, the thing is, when people make noise like that, or when they're like you know overtly and being hyperbolically negative or something like the best thing to do is ignore it because they want you to react they want you to share their tweet and say look at this a-hole that's what they want you to do because that helps spread their word and then people who agree with them will be like no he's not a-hole you're an a-hole and it just starts you know unnecessary arguments all the time uh so for me that all that lady gaga stuff i just kind of laughed at it i'm like well i'm not going to give it really that much attention because it doesn't matter it's uh you know i kept hoping it wouldn't affect the opening weekend movie numbers and it didn't venom still kicked a lot of butt opening weekend and still holds the record Halloween didn't beat it uh, you know and so that's great it's you know a new franchise with Venom and a, a pre-existing franchise now granted Halloween did amazing uh, you know because the movie cost like 10 million to make and it made 77 million opening weekend that's insanely good for that movie um so i'm glad i think it's going to get a sequel now too so uh hopefully they announce the venom sequel soon that's what they need to do but i think they're waiting till after the china numbers come in which which makes a lot of sense but i feel confident we'll probably get one uh for sure um all right jason Vo uh, Voorhees, uh, jay Voorhees says uh spoiler i want to tell you when venom burned in the fire in a the theater was silent and my daughter heartbroken voice crackled it's time to cry and the crowd went aw oh that's cute uh, so i guess when they were watching it when the um when when venom was burning when like you know uh, like and i guess the explosion or something uh, at the end of the movie that she said it's time to cry so uh, she still get uh, uh, jay still gave it a 7.5 uh, or 8 out of 10 you know it's a, a kind of a fluctuating scale kind of how mine was at first too um so uh, that's awesome that sounds really adorable though when <laughs> your daughter doing that um Swordsman says, so I saw the movie and it was a fun ride. Overall, I give it a B. Uh, pros, Tom Hardy knocks it out of the park. It's very funny. Uh, the movie gets Venom mostly right, which I totally agree with. Uh, cons, the Clintar, for the most part, need a particular host to survive. Uh, they also lack some of their abilities that are exclusive to them that aren't tied to Spidey, like camouflage. Um, and then instead of a, a needing a certain chemical, uh, Clintar need to eat people slash animals, as I was never was a fan of Venom's cannibalistic phase. I'm glad they changed this to the movie to make it PG-13. Uh, yeah, um, in the comic though, I think they said like when you know there is a chemical that people produce uh, that they I think in Play of the Symbiotes they talk because I think we talked about it in our review. Uh, but then when they brought in the chocolate thing later on in like you know one of the miniseries or something, um, yeah, they they kind of established that there's something in like chocolate that you know uh you know that the suit responds to and then also that in sometimes in people especially if they eat chocolate you know it's in them so yeah i see what you're saying i, I guess i could see it as a con too it's a but the, the movie i you know, i agree with you overall the, it mostly got venom right and that is probably the best we could have hoped for for this movie is that uh they had a big obstacle they have to make venom without spider-man and i kept saying and hoping that they could do it uh, and it was great to see that they actually, in my opinion, they did. Uh, they did a great job uh, establishing Venom as a solo character uh, without Spider-Man. Um, so thank you, Swordsman, for the, the comment. 
Uh, also here we have another one from Yeah So. Also, I'm really disappointed that they had an opportunity to expand upon the lore of the symbiotes, and they seemingly made no attempt. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Uh, again, that's probably stuff they'll save for the sequel, but it would have been nice to get more of that. And I'm sure some of that is in the deleted scenes, because like I said, with him uh, talking to the suit and it saying, I'm a loser, that scene felt very cut together and last, you know, like rushed in a way to get a lot of exposition about the suit. And I imagine there's probably a little bit more to that and a little bit more explanation of what the suit is and why it connects to Eddie. And I have a feeling we'll get that probably in the Blu-ray. I'm hoping anyway. Um, Dana Muhammad said Ve uh, Venom just became the highest grossing October weekend opening in entire history. It's grossed over $205 million worldwide. And Venom finally shattered October records and became number one. Heck yeah. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then he went on to say that I really love the movie. It was awesome. So there you go. There's a, a nice review from D uh, Dana Muhammad. Uh, thank you for your comment. And yes, it broke so many records and uh, it was awesome. All right. Hopefully I can get through these last ones. We have uh, Paul Pinkham. Uh, Paul Pinkham says the biggest issue with making a solo Venom film like this was the source material itself. Venom doesn't really have a rogues gallery of enemies with a deep and rich history, which is I 100% agree with. You are right on that one. He doesn't have his own universe. It is mostly borrowed from Spider-Man's. When the Venom movie was announced and we found out he'd be fighting other symbiotes, I was kind of bummed. To me, it cheapens the uniqueness of Venom, which I also agree with. Uh, but then again, there are just way too many symbiotes for my taste running around in the comics, too, and hosts um, outside of Carnage, who is, you know, who, who Paul seems to like, uh, who, which I agree, too. <laughs> uh, knowing the limitations that Sony had to work with, though, I don't know what else could have been done other than focus on Drake and his motivations and less on other symbiotes. Maybe Drake could have had his super, his super security force Venom has to go up with. With 900 Marvel characters at their disposal, what's not to introduce a couple of low-level villain henchmen that are hired by Drake? Anything but other symbiotes to fight, at least not as a focal villain. Um, I did enjoy the movie, though. Loved it, actually. It definitely could have been better, stronger, though. And I agree. And that I, I we talk about that all the time with uh, origin movies, where it's like it's the the hero versus the 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 evil version of the hero. You know, like Iron Man versus Iron Monger. You know, uh, Captain America versus uh, Red Skull, who also went through a version of the Super Soldier program. It just you know mutated them in a way. Uh, so in Hulk versus you know uh, evil Hulk or whatever Abomination. Um, so yeah, I totally agree. I I, I was kind of hoping they wouldn't do that either. Uh, that would have been cool if they brought in if they had the jury. But again, you have to establish why something like the jury would exist. Why is there a group of Iron Man super soldiers working for this company? Uh, how does the public take that? You know, whatever. I could see the jury being created now for the sequel um, and bringing in military characters. That would be really cool, like X Men Two style, where they brought in like a uh, you know William Stryker and stuff. That'd be cool. It's like all right, it's Venom versus Carnage in the second one. And then the world being like, oh my god, these things are multiplying. We already saw, you know, they didn't really broadcast. I guess the world doesn't know about the tr uh, the Carlton Drake riot thing and him becoming riot. The world, I guess, probably doesn't know too much about that. Although Eddie is probably going to write an expose and and reveal that on some level, or maybe he'll hide the symbiote from uh, the public. Who knows? Uh, but I imagine once the public knows symbiotes exist and they're you know bigger out there, uh, like Mrs. Chan, she might you know create a blog <laughs> where she's like, well, I saw this, you know, parasite thing, eat a guy in my, my shop or something. Um, but once the public catches on, I think that's when something like the jury comes in. But you're right. Um, what was it? Treese? They, they made Roland Treese a henchman for, uh, who is the guy who was in charge of the jury in the comics. Um, or he's one of them. No. Yeah. I think he was one of them. Uh, but they, they took him away and they made him just like a goon in this one and they got Scott Hayes to play him and I thought it was a wasted opportunity. Scott Hayes is such a great actor and really he added nothing being just the grunt. But if you would have turned Scott Hayes into like, you know, Puma, <laughs> you know, or just something, you know, something like that, uh, that, that could have added something to the movie for sure. Uh, and that would have made their fight a little bit more interesting. So I, I totally agree. Uh, with 900 characters at disposal, they could have been a little bit smarter with it. And, uh, but yeah, you're right. They focused too much on, you know, two, they wanted two symbiotes to fight, but it's like, yeah, but now the sequel is going to have that too. So, uh, yeah, it could be, it could come across as a little too much for sure. Sorry for the cuts. If you're seeing me cut a lot, it's because there's a lot of uh, noise uh, coming and going outside. So I apologize. My new apartment is not as quiet as my previous apartment, unfortunately. Um, so uh, we, so you'll see a lot of cuts in this episode, so I apologize. Uh, we have Third Degree Burn says, I absolutely love this film. It's truly one of the best superhero films I've seen to date, and I've seen them all. I'm so excited for a sequel. We are Venom. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's great, Third Degree Burn. Thank you for the comment, and I'm glad. I can't wait. I hope they announce a sequel soon, and I hope we start getting details on it. Uh, we'll pro they'll probably wait until Ruben Fleischer is uh, you know, finishing principal photography for Zombieland 2. 
and then they'll probably get into that. But I'm sure Sony will announce it at least at some point in the near future. We just got to wait for those uh, China box office numbers to come in, I'm thinking. Uh, Kaysen, right again, uh, says, favorite review I've seen. I agree with most of everything you said, if not all of it. The editing definitely makes things seem choppy at times, and my largest qualm was it seems too short, especially in certain scenes, like you mentioned, where they could have drawn it out. Yeah, that's kind of my thing. I feel like when you get good actors like Michelle Williams and Riz Ahmed, like, I, I feel like they weren't as good in this movie as I thought, and it's because some of the editing chopped up the scenes they were in. And sometimes you need actors like that to kind of breathe in the scene and just like, you know, talk a lot in the scene and just have like a moment in the scene. And I get it for time purposes and, you know, budget, everything they wanted to get it to a certain, you know, uh, length. But, uh, but it did come across a little chaotic in some of those sequences. And I'm like, no, just take your time with this. Like, let this ha scene happen. Uh, I, I just finished watching ha uh, Haunting of Hill House, and they do that a lot. They let the actors just kind of you know, be in the scene and it works so well to that show's benefit. Uh, so I would have liked to see more of that. So hopefully we will in the second one, especially with Carnage. I don't want to see them chop up scenes with Carnage dialogue. I want to see him, you know, linger in the scene and fill the, the screen up and, you know, crouched over a dead body. You know, I want to see things like that. I want to see the scene breathe. So hopefully they do that more in the second one for sure. Um, Julian uh, Topfer says, how awesome would it have been if uh, during the chase scene, instead of a generic Life Foundation henchman, he was being chased by the jury? Missed opportunity for sure uh, for Julian. I agree. That would have been awesome. Uh, again, though, you have to establish why the jury would exist in a world that doesn't have major threats like Venom. Like ve it se Jury seems like a response team. That's kind of what they were in the comics, too. They were like a response to Venom. Um, if, if the if the motivations for the Life Foundation were the same as the comics, where it was a bunch of like one percenters who were like, kind of like Resident Evil 6, the final chapter, it was like the heads of Umbrella built a, a bunker and they all lived, you know, it, they were all like cryogenically frozen in it and they purposely infected the world and then waited for the zombies and the monsters to starve themselves and die out and then they would wake back up and then they would have a whole world to kind of reform and it would only be like 100,000 people. It was like a way to control the population and that was kind of what uh, they were doing with the Life Foundation in some regards. Uh, they were, you know, worried about the fallout of a nuclear war uh, during the Cold War and stuff and they were like, all right, let's go under in bunkers. Let's hide down here. We'll let the world destroy itself and in 100 years we'll wake back up and, you know, while we're down there to make sure we stay protected during these bombing stuff, we'll have like some kind of guardian, like the Tri-Sentinel or, you know, like other characters that they've helped create. And then at some point they're like, oh, we'll use symbiotes to protect us. Um, so they had different motivations. And so a group like the jury made sense because these were people who were like freaking out about the end of the world. And although Carlton Drake did have that, his aspiration or his problem, his, his way of solving that problem was to go into space. And so that's where it's like, ah, but jury would have been cool because you could have easily said like, oh, well, these are the suits we're designing to go into space with, um, you know, and it seems like he didn't have a plan to go into space other than building a rocket. And it was like coincidence that the symbiote showed up and he's like, oh, now we have a way to breathe and live in space. And it's like, well, he should have been working on some kind of suit that could have later been used by Treese to fight Venom with, and you, he could have been the one jury member in the movie. That would have been really cool. Uh, but maybe they thought that was too Iron Man-y, and maybe that's why they didn't do it. So uh, so I, I can understand both sides of that argument for sure. Nova Dragon says, I can really see the third movie being about Toxin, a uh, storyline with Eddie and Venom trying to protect Toxin from Carnage and trying to teach him to be a lethal protector. What do you guys think? And I think, uh, uh, yeah, so said, I personally would like to see them move away from symbiotes, which I, after Carnage, which I kind of agree with, uh, but Proof, Proof Fan definitely loves that idea. Uh, you guys, let me know what you think of that idea. Nova, ha that's a pretty interesting idea. I, I'm not a big fan of the Toxin character. We did a review of, like, the introduction to Toxin, but we haven't done the Toxin miniseries. We'll get into that in Season 3. I mean, I think there's a story to be told there, but at the same time, I'm kind of with Yes, So. I kind of want them to move away from symbiotes. I don't want a trilogy of just Venom fighting symbiotes. Uh, but I have a feeling that's what we might end up getting. Uh, but I hope they don't. I hope they figure out something different for the third movie. I think a lot of people said they'd like to see Null in the third movie. And I could see that being a possibility. That's a great way to escalate something. Uh, that's a great way to... Um, tie it back to the first movie, because you could say that Null, you can kind of change his origin. He could maybe be the, the ruler of Clintar, and kind of like their version of Thanos, and maybe he sent uh, Riot, like Riot was his general, and he sent Riot with these other symbiotes to Earth to, you know, infect it, and to, you know, lead, you know, like an invasion or something. Um, you could totally do that. I could see that happening, um, and uh, I would probably, I, I could see them doing Null, more than Toxin, most likely. Um, so yeah, so that would be interesting, but you guys let me know what you think of uh, Nova's comment down below. 
Uh, Space Cowboy says, great, honest review. I definitely enjoyed it. 7 out of 10 myself, uh, says Space Cowboy. Also, you know, so agreed with me on the 7 out of 10. And thank you. I mean, yeah, I, I have no reason to not be honest about stuff. Uh, I don't win anything for, you know, kiss and butt. And I don't win anything for being ultra negative. Uh, uh, so I, I, typically you'll see me on a lot of things. I kind of fall in the middle. Some people call me like a fence rider. And it's like, no, I don't agree with that at all. I don't think I'm a fence rider. What I am is someone who has chosen a side. It's just not side A or B. Um, and so, uh, but I, I just try to make up my own mind. If I'm critical on something, I'll tell you it. You don't have to agree with me. That's the beauty of this show is that it's just my opinion on stuff. And I don't hate you guys for having a different opinion. And I welcome you to share it always in the comments below. Um, but, uh, but I will never not be honest with you guys. I'll always tell you exactly how I feel about the things we're talking about 100% of the time, I promise. Um, if I ever don't, or if you, if you honestly don't think I am being honest, let me know in the comments and we can talk, uh, talk about it down there and I can maybe explain better why I feel a certain way. Um, Eddie's Mullet said, I love the movie. I did a review on the Venom site. Uh, that So I'll put a link to that down below for you guys if you want. Uh, Eddie's Mullet, really nice guy. Been commenting for, for months and months on this show. Um, if you're interested, I did read his review. And yes, he did like the movie. Um, so uh, for, for you guys, I'll put a link to it down below. Uh, so that way you guys can see it. Um, and he said, my favorite part was Hardy. He freaking nailed it. My main criticism is that they left too much information out for the casual fan. And I will agree to that too. There was a, I had a friend, a couple friends, as you saw me go see the movie with, and all of them, all three viewings, had questions for me afterwards. Why wasn't this? What was that about? You know. And uh, so I feel like you know that some of those could have been answered with the second viewing, uh, but some of those, I, I think you just had to know as a fan. So uh, so yeah, it, it they could have straddled that line a little bit better with, uh, you know, explaining things for for the masses. Uh, but, you know, it was, it's not that it, the movie was confusing by any means, but I, I see what you mean there. Um, there were some gaps for sure. Um, so, yeah, and then a small thing that really bugged me he uh, was that he mentioned his mom. Um, did he? Uh, you know what? If so, I, I missed on that. Did Eddie Brock mention his mom? Uh, that's interesting. I don't know if I, I don't know if I caught that. Um yeah, that would be interesting in the sequel. Did he mention his mom? Like, Because, you know, he did have a mom. He just never met her. She died when she gave birth to him. So, um, I don't know. I, I have to. I saw the movie three times. I don't remember the mom being mentioned. But uh, that's neat. I'll have to check. I'll have to revisit. I saw the movie four times, actually. Three times in one week and then a fourth time. So, yeah, I don't remember the mom. Uh, but comment down below, Eddies, if you're watching this. Uh, comment down below with uh, where in the movie that happened at. Uh, I'd love to know. Uh, I'm a tad bad. He said, Saturday afternoon, I was so darn worried the entire time uh, getting to the theater, I frantically found every piece of black clothing I had and wore it <laughs> and my lethal protector shirt. That's really great. Um, I'm also kind of a loser on my world. I loved watching the movie and I really hoped uh, that the sequel can find a reasonable consensus with some of the complaints, uh, get a budget raise and just have some more badass stuff in it. Yeah, the budget raise thing I'm worried about. I'm sure they're going to raise the budget probably to like 125 or 150 most likely. Um, but, you know, that means l l that narrows their chance of more profit too. So uh, it'll be really interesting to see. I think you can do the, the second one for nearly the same price. Maybe go up $10 million, I think. Um, but, you know, because you're going to have to pay for Woody Harrelson. But I would try to keep it the same and try to keep it gr as grounded as possible. You know, uh, that's how I would do this. And then save the third one for the big, you know, uh, you know, big budget, you know, version if you do Nolan stuff. So I don't know, uh, but but these are all neat. He wrote like a whole paragraph, so I, I can't read it all because of the amount of space left I have recording. But uh, but yeah, it, you know, all these comments you can find on episode 191, uh, they're down below uh, in that video. Uh, or 291, I'm sorry, 291. Uh, but uh, yes, thank you, Tad Batty. Uh, but I agree, I mean, and, and overall, Tad Batty really enjoyed the film. All right, the last few. I think I got everybody in. This is fantastic. Uh, so let's get through these last ones. Nova Dragon says, Tom Hardy was born to play Eddie Brock Venom and makes me wonder how uh, he would have done if he played Agent Venom. Oh, interesting. Played Flash Thompson Venom? Uh, I'm, I'm sure he would have knocked it out of the park too. I, he really committed to this role, and I think most people um, enjoyed his performance overall. Uh, I know a lot of people were critical of his performance too, which I get, but uh, but that he committed. Like, yeah, he was 100% played that character. And uh, and for us Venom fans, that's all we could have really hoped for, I feel. Um, but some Venom fans did not like it, so I totally, I understand their point of view. Um, 
But uh, yeah, I know a lot of you guys left multiple comments. I'll just you know do my best to read some of them if I can. Um, so if I skip over your second or third comment, I apologize. Uh, but we have Embry Square, who uh, recently I'm gonna, I'll do a better shout out in the next episode. But he carved him and his daughter carved a pumpkin for Halloween with uh, venom on it. And I'll I'll show that in episode 300. We'll we'll kind of dedicate that episode to you guys, and we'll try to make it like a 10 minute video, and <laughs> not like a long one like this one. Um, but just got out. Verdict is good and not great, but it is not as bad as what critics and reviews are saying. Uh, I say about a seven. 0.25 uh, to a low eight for me. So somewhere between seven and eight for him, for sure. Uh, but that's, you know, that's great. I think that's the average uh, review for this movie for a lot of like the fans uh, seem to come out with like a seven or eight out of 10, which is fantastic. It's still a good movie. And like you said, that's it's nowhere near as bad as people said it was. I really had fun watching the film. Um, and I, you know, if I was that bored of it, I wouldn't have seen it that third time. I would have gotten AMC to like, you know, return my tickets and seen it like a week or two later. But I totally didn't mind seeing it three days in a row. And that's saying a lot for me because I typically don't watch a lot of stuff more than once. And I typically don't go to the theater. I really just don't like going to the movies. Uh, there's too many people there. It's 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 too much of a uh, an experience for me uh, with some of my health stuff. So I, I don't like going to where a lot of crowds are typically. Um, and so sometimes when you see me make videos like Comic Cons like that, like I have to like <laughs> like medicate myself just to get through stuff like that sometimes. Theaters, I don't have to do that too. It's just a movie, uh, you know, overall, but it still can be very intense for me. So I don't typically go to the movies that much. So to see a movie three times in one week, back to back to back, is a lot for me. And that just, but I was dedicated. I wanted to see it. I wanted to pick up every little detail before I made my review so that I felt like I was making as honest of a review as I could and that I could point out things that most people would overlook seeing it one time. Um, so, so I'm glad you guys enjoyed the review and left all these wonderful comments. Um, Brendan Roan says, uh, I personally had a lot of fun with the movie and I think it is a great portrayal of the character by Tom Hardy and all the other performances were great. The best part of the movie was the relationship between Eddie and Venom, which I 100% agree with. A lot of people felt that way. And Brendan also gave the movie a 7 out of 10. So Brendan, thank you so much. Also another 7 out of 10 from you. Um, so uh, so that's, yeah, we got a lot of 7 out of 10s. That's great. I'm glad you guys were all kind of in that ballpark uh, for sure. So you see, you acknowledge there's rooms to improve, uh, but you also, you know, had as much fun with it as I did, which is awesome. Uh, Nova Dragon once again says, We are Venom, Venom movie. I saw the movie and really liked it for what it was, an action popcorn flick with my favorite Marvel character. And I'm glad it's doing well at the box office. Yes, it's it destroyed. Uh, for the kind of movie it was, it destroyed at the box office. Uh, so far, we'll have to wait to see what China and Japan bring in, though, uh, to, to really claim that. Um, Venom Gaming says, My in-depth review... Oh my goodness, this is pretty long. Uh, not too long, actually. I personally really liked the movie. I thought Venom was portrayed perfectly, and I thought they captured the essence of each character, mainly Eddie, Venom, and Ann, uh, Ann Carlton. Uh... Oh, oh, Anne and Carlton Drake, sorry, uh, I thought was a great villain. Um, yeah, I wasn't so sold on him as a villain, but I, I saw a lot of you guys really liked him, so that's good. Again, different opinion, but that's totally okay. Um, and, uh, you know, Venom planning together and killing criminals and Life Foundation goons and all that stuff. Uh, as far as Riot, they could have done more with him from jumping host to host, uh, but overall still like the movie. Final rating, 7 out of 10. So we've got another 7 out of 10 there. Um, so that's great. Uh, Venom Gaming, thank you. You've been here since pretty early on in this show, and it was really nice to see that you left a review on here. Uh, I really appreciate that, dude, and I hope you're doing very well. Um, Mr. Nobody, we have two left. Mr. Nobody, 1987, says, I personally love the film. I definitely disagree with the critics. Tom Hardy and all the other actors did such a great job. The score, the CGI, which, by the way, I agree, the score was really good. The CGI, everything was great. Uh, the first time I watched it, I, j I would just hold myself, uh, hold myself not to scream each time I saw the symbiote, and I literally was shaking when I saw the scene including Venom uh, though of course it wasn't the best movie ever I think it had a lot of wasted potential but I really liked the film overall 8.5 out of 10 that's pretty good that's awesome thank you Mr. Nobody uh, 1987 uh, good year I guess um, <laughs> uh, but I appreciate your comment that's really cool and I know a lot of you guys agreed with that and I and I think a lot of people he said also PG-13 was fine for him and uh, and I, I I would agree to that. The PG-13 element didn't actually bother me at all. I kind of figured it wouldn't. Uh, you know, the R would have just... Uh, a prime example of that was like the, the Titan show. Recently, I've been watching that, and they just throw F-bombs in there just to keep that mature rating. But the show really doesn't do much to earn it. Uh, in certain episodes, like the second episode had a big scene that earned it for sure. It was kind of intense and gross. Uh, but the rest of the show 
Not really so much. They kind of rely on the F-bombs to give it that mature rating, and it feels very forced. And so whenever things feel forced like that, I, 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 you know, I don't like it. So I'm glad they decided to not force anything, especially with like harsh language and stuff, and they just told the story they wanted to tell. And so the PG-13, like you, it didn't bother me. All right, last comment is from Reese Lively. I'm so happy that Venom is doing so much of his, uh, having such success. About a couple of months before this movie came out, I prayed so much for this movie to do well and to, to tell the haters to F off. And I can't believe that my prayers have been answered, which I'm so grateful of, but I love the review, see, great job. Um, that's funny that you prayed to tell people to F off and uh, your prayers came true. I know what you mean. Uh, for me, I mean, uh, you know, the haters are, they're gonna, they're always gonna exist. No matter what you like, there are gonna be people out there that overtly hate it, uh, and almost to a comical or cartoony level. And some of those people are just trolls, so you, you could just, it's easy to ignore them. Um, but some of them are real people that, uh, you know, unfortunately have the job of critic, and, uh, and, and, their, and their voice, you know, reaches far. And you're kind of like, oh, that sucks because I feel like they're just hating on it to hate on it. And granted, sometimes, I mean, people genuinely didn't like this movie. There were people out there that genuinely didn't like it. And that's fine. I wouldn't even call them haters. They just didn't like the movie, you know. And so we have to just, you know, kind of tone down, I think. I think a lot of us get so take things so personally. When someone hates something we like, we take it so personally because we feel like it's them hating a part of us. And it's like, it's not though, it's not. Uh, it, does, it doesn't matter. I, 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 you know, working in comics and putting books out there, I get criticized all the time. And I got a lot, I got a lot of negative stuff about some of the things I've written. And you have to listen. As hard as it is sometimes, you have to listen because uh, if 20 or 30 people, you know, tell you, you know, that something sucks that you did, then it's worth a look, you know? And I'm saying 20 or 30 for me, I don't have a big reach. If, if, I, if I had like a million subscribers and 20 or 30 told me I did something stupid, I probably would mostly ignore those 20 or 30 people and be like, yeah, I heard you, but I'm, things probably won't change. But if I have like 100 followers, you know, and 20 or 30 tell me it sucks, it's worth looking into, you know, it's it, as much as you don't want to, you gotta put your ego aside and realize what's best for the project. Because even though this project may be done, you want to learn from it so you can make the next one better. Um, and so listening to criticism is very valuable, uh, you know, especially, you know, when people are calm about it. When people are just coming and go, you suck, this sucks, everything sucks, F, F, F. You know, when they just come in and they're clearly just being an a-hole, I typically won't listen. I won't give them the time of day. Um, but if someone comes in with like a valid criticism, like, hey, the, you know, this could have been done better. This panel kind of sucked, uh, you know, like the way it was drawn um, or the writing in this page was really bad. You know, I've heard it all before. And some days I don't like it Some and, and I try to defend myself, but then it'll sit with me over time and I'll go, you know what, maybe that person was right. Maybe I could do things a little bit better next time. So, you know, it's, it's good to hear that. But when people just instantly hate, just if they're if they're just overtly negative and they're just coming at you and attacking you, just block them and move on. Like don't let things like that ruin your day, and don't feel glee really for telling people to f off. Like I felt a little bit of happiness when Scott Mendelson had to write that uh, you know piece on Forbes about how well the Venom movie was doing. And I felt a little bit because I'm like, oh, this guy has been trash in the movie, um, you know, before it came out and then after it came out and he made fun of the movie and, you know, said what he didn't like about it. But that's his job to an extent. And uh, and I thought, although I thought he was being unprofessional sometimes with some of the comments he made about the movie or just uh, it weirdly would go out of his way to be negative sometimes. Um, I don't have any ill will towards the guy and, and, uh, and I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to go type and say, see, hater, told you. Or I'm not going to write the comic book cast and be like, hey, see, hater, told you. It, I don't, that doesn't really give me a, a ton of pleasure in any way. Uh, but on a, on a, on a, a smaller note though, I kind of do smirk. Because I'm like, hey, the movie did well despite all odds. And I'm more happy that the movie did well. And I don't really try not to think too much about the people who, you know, hated on it and tried to get the movie to not do well. Uh, it's a victory for us. And like I always said since the beginning of the show, don't let those things bother you so much to where it would bring out the worst in you. Uh, that's the big key. That's how you win. That's how you beat your enemies is you don't become them. Um, and uh, because that's what they want you to do. So to me, I'm just like, yeah, those guys, they hated, they hated, they did all they could to prevent this from happening, to prevent this movie from being a financial success. And it, it, they, they failed at it. The, the movie still reached people and still found uh, a fan base and still got a lot of people to go see it. And it's continuing to do well. And hopefully China and Japan will round it out and stick that landing. And we have, you know, a big $650, $700 million, uh, you know, gross at the theaters 
from this movie. That would be amazing. Uh, so we'll have to see that in Season 3. We'll get into the final numbers of Venom in Season 3 because uh, after I finish Episode 300, we won't be talking more about the Venom movie for a while, for at least a couple weeks. So closer to Thanksgiving, we'll come back, and at that point, we'll have at least the first two weeks of China numbers and the first three weeks of Japan's numbers, and we'll know basically closer to what the Venom movie is going to be. But keep an eye on my Twitter. I'll probably put those numbers up. Um, you know, every week when I'm able to. Uh, but as far as videos go, we'll get back to that uh, soon. I just need to take a little bit of break from Venom. We're going to get into, after my surgery, I, I'm going to be on rest for a couple days. We're going to get into Joker stuff. We're going to get into some DC stuff. So hopefully you guys do, you know, check those out. I know those videos don't get a lot of views, uh, but I work just as hard as on those as I do these ones. So hopefully you guys do, you know, check them out. And then I'll have some Into the Venomverse uh, episodes about the Spider-Verse movie coming out. I'll have some of those coming up very soon too. Uh, but you guys have been great. As always, I can't thank you enough for helping this channel grow. We are getting to how many? Uh, I have a lot of subscribers now. I think we're almost at 1,700. We're at 1,693 subscribers, and that is over a thousand. Like that's 1,100 more people subscribed to this channel uh, than there were when we started this show. When we started the show, we were around 600 uh, subscribers, and now we're almost at 2,000 subscribers, and that means a lot to me. A lot of you guys keep writing and saying, "Dude, you know, why don't you have more subscribers?" Subscribers. You need, you know, you need more subscribers. There are things I could probably do to, you know, get more, do live streams, stuff like that. I just don't have time to commit to certain things. I got to record when it's, you know, works for me and that won't always work for like your guys' bedtimes and stuff like that. So it's easier for me to record, pre-record stuff and post them later, you know, edited. That's just the format I like. I'm trying to learn more about editing. Live streams can be kind of easy and I don't see a lot of like, you know, as much hard work put into those as uh, I do that I would put into a, like a polished video. So I try to do the polished stuff. Plus my webcam kind of sucks. So the quality of a live stream would be really bad. Um, but I will try to reach out. Some of you mentioned uh, to be on other, uh, talk to other YouTubers and be on their shows and expand that way. Uh, I definitely tried that. I was on, you know, RNS was nice enough to reach out to me. Um, you know, uh, Hybrid Network was nice enough to reach out to me and post, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, mention me in their videos. Uh, then we all, you know, obviously uh, Dave Film Junkie, who's running a marathon right now for suicide prevention which is really great i'll put a link down below i always have suicide links down below that you can donate to to help uh, prevent suicide uh, i that's, i believe in that big time it's been in all my videos for about three years now i think uh, so definitely check out those links down below but i'll put dave's link you can uh, you know donate a few dollars to this uh, charity run that he was doing this weekend you can put it in his name uh, dave pina p-e-n-a um so yeah i'll put that link down below and uh, you guys, I mean, like, so I have reached out. Fernie uh, from Gamer Squad talked to me recently. So I do, you know, go on other shows. I've had a couple other people reach out to me. I'll definitely try to do that. But with my equipment and what I have set up here, I can't really host a lot of things like that. Uh, so I'm, I'm working on it. I don't have a lot of money right now. But as soon as we start making money on this, we'll get there. And after we, you know, if we cross 2,000, I will definitely dedicate more time to this, and I will, uh, I'll do the best I can to get more equipment. Uh, but right now, just financially, I, it's not possible uh, with all my medical stuff and everything. So, uh, one, let's get through this holiday season, and then we'll see where we are in January, and maybe we can start the year off with some new stuff on here. Uh, at least that's what I hope. So, thank you guys as always. I, it means the world to me. Well, I will thank you guys even more in episode 300, which will be coming up next, and I'll try to. Fill it probably tomorrow which is my day off on Sunday and I'll try to get it up before my surgery uh, which is now going to be I think on Tuesday or Wednesday is my surgery so it got got shuffled around a little bit but my mom is visiting too so maybe I'll include her in the 300 episode if possible uh, if you guys wouldn't mind seeing you know meeting my mom I guess uh, but again thank you guys from the bottom of my heart let me know what you think of all this down in the comments below and if you have a review that you want to add go ahead and do it in the comments below and we'll talk more down there thanks for watching my show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff see you in the future peace